of President Pena Nieto canceling his visit to Washington seems to be turning a tide of unpopularity among the people of Mexico that has plagued him in recent years. NBC's Mariana Atencio joins us live now from Mexico City. So how is this playing out in the headlines there? Cameron, in the headlines here, President Trump is the best thing to have happened to President Enrique Peña Nieto, who was having his lowest approval ratings since he took office until he canceled that meeting in Washington. Now, opposition figures like Manuel López López Obrador, like Margarita Zavala, opposition figures are rallying around Peña Nieto, political parties, intellectuals from different factions, something that was unheard of two weeks ago. And regular Mexicans here in the streets are telling me they feel Peña Nieto is now the president who stood up for Mexicans' dignity. Now, I'm here with corporate lawyer Alfonso Villalba. Alfonso, what kind of pressure is Peña Nieto under? What do the people, people like yourself, want from him now? Well, I, I would say that people from Mexico want a true leader. Uh, they want to take a stand and, and speak uh, very loudly. Uh, a lot of people is feeling offended for the attitude of, uh, of Mr. Trump and, and the way he handles things. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, it was a surprise for Mr. Uh, Peña. Uh, everybody expected that it, this was kind of a bragging in a political campaign. But now that uh, everybody's realizing that is uh, reality, then uh, we have to take different steps. So people want him to to be a true leader, to take a stand and speak for dignity and, and, and uh, sovereignty. But at the same time, he has to be very clever because there's a lot of stake. Uh, the relationship between the, uh, Mexico and the U.S. is very complex uh, in terms of business, eco uh, economy, but at the same time, social issues, community issues, uh, humanitarian issues, uh, family issues. People are living on both sides of the border. Thank you so much, Alfonso, for joining us this morning. Tamron, one Mexican told me today that they want President Peña to be macho, to keep having this aggressive stance against Donald Trump for what they perceive is a very sort of dismissive attitude from the president of the United States toward Mexicans. And as we just heard from Alfonso, President Peña now, he's under a lot of pressure and he's actually holding an emergency meeting with lawmakers today to see what are the next steps they will be taken as a response to Donald Trump's actions. And I spoke with one of the senators who will be in attendance today about what the possible course of action could be. And this is what he told us. We should stop collaborating with the United States, with this hostile administration specifically, uh, regarding security issues, regarding anti-terrorism uh, that we've been working together for the last years. We need to analyze uh, this uh, 20 percent uh, tax that we've heard of yesterday and I think we we will retaliate for instance in the states of the corn belt I think we should start thinking of, of not buying any more corn to those states As you heard, Tamron, they are considering very concrete actions in terms of security, in terms of the fight against drug cartels, as well as a retaliation, quote unquote, as he mentioned, in terms of trade that could really ultimately hurt the American consumer and American producers in uh, the Corn Belt, as he mentioned. All right. Thank you very much. And joining me live now from Mexico City, former U.S. ambassador to Mexico under President Obama, Carlos Pascual. He also served as U.S. ambassador to Ukraine under President Clinton and George W. Bush. He's currently a senior vice president at IHS Global Energy, which advises government and businesses. Thank you, sir, for your time. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, do you believe that we're headed toward a trade war here? Uh, there's a potential that we can go down in that direction. And one of the things that both sides have to look at is that staying in this, in this clash, in this battle, is simply bad for both countries. The trade issues at stake, the economics issues, the job issues, the security issues, the migration issues, eventually they become all intertwined. And in the end, by having the standoff where we can't communicate, we end up in lose-lose situations that don't benefit either country. Ambassador, was this inevitable after the election of Donald Trump? This was a campaign pledge he made that there, there would be a wall, that Mexico would have to pay for it. Uh, there was always a possibility uh, that he would win, although the election was shocking uh, to the world. But was this something that was bound to happen with the election of Donald Trump? It wasn't inevitable that it had to happen. I think the key point was when President Trump 
um, particularly objected to President Peña Nieto, the Mexican president's statement that Mexico would not pay for the wall, and responded to that in a tweet saying that if you're not going to pay, then reconsider coming to the United States. That put President Peña Nieto in a really a no-choice situation, and he had to cancel that visit. But in reality, everybody knew that this was going to be an issue that had to be addressed, the question of the wall, the question of trade relationships, the modernization of NAFTA, the cooperation of security issues. Those are reasonable issues to have negotiations on. There are better solutions that both countries potentially can come up with. It didn't have to end in an impasse. It doesn't have to be an impasse. And right now, one of the critical questions for all of the parties is how to work out of the situation where, where both sides have drawn a line on the basis of principle. Those principles aren't going to change in the next six to 12 months, so they have to find a foundation to actually get themselves back to a negotiating table. But it seemed as it related to NAFTA, there was room uh, for negotiation. There was room to discuss border security and some of these issues. There never appeared to be wiggle room as it relates to the building of the wall paid for by Mexico. So how do you see or how would you advise the conversation to move forward when there is a clear line in the sand? regarding payment here. I think that both, both sides have to take the opportunity that there's going to be a change, um, presumably in the U.S. system, which is soon that you'll have, we will have a Secretary of State in the United States, Rex Tillerson, that it will introduce a new actor, that that creates an opportunity for a new line of discussion um, between Secretaries of State and Minister of Foreign Relations on both sides to bring together teams that look at the full array of issues um, of trade, security, migration, and begin to lay out what can be better solutions for all sides. I think just simply on the issue of the wall, one has to come back to the point that more Mexicans are coming back to the United States than are going to the, than going to the United States right now. The principal migration issues are coming out of Central America. The United States cannot fix those questions without Mexico's support and cooperation. And so ironically, the lowest cost solution would be the United States and Mexico cooperating to support a border security program with Central America. America. These are some of the common sense issues that need to be put on the table, and in the end, maybe more creative op alternatives can come out of those discussions. Ambassador Pasquale, thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.